chap. Xlif dot of the images of the mansions of the moon. They made, also, images for every mansion of the moon as follows colon. In the first, for the destruction of someone, they made, in an iron ring, the image of a black man, in a garment of hair, and girdled round, casting a small lance with his right hand, they sealed this in black wax, and perfumed it with liquid storax, and wished some evil to come. In the second, against the wrath of the prince, and for reconciliation with him, they sealed, in white wax and mastich, the image of a king crowned, and perfumed it with lignum aloes. In the third, they made an image in a silver ring, whose table was square, the figure of which was a woman, well clothed, sitting in a chair, her right hand being lifted up on her head, they sealed it, and perfumed it with musk, camphor, and calamus aromaticus. They affirmed that this gives happy fortune, and every good thing. In the fourth, for revenge, separation, enmity, and ill will, they sealed, in red wax, the image of a soldier sitting on a horse, holding a serpent in his right hand, they perfumed it with red myrrh and storax. In the fifth, for the favor of kings and officers, and good entertainment, they sealed, in silver, the head of a man, and perfumed it with red sanders. In the sixth, to procure love between two, they sealed, in white wax, two images, embracing one another, and perfumed them with lignum aloes and amber. In the seventh, to obtain every good thing, they scaled, in silver, the image of a man, well clothed, holding up his hands to heaven, as it were, praying and supplicating, and perfumed it with good odors. In the eighth, for victory in war, they made a seal in tin being an image of an eagle, having the face of a man, and perfumed it with brimstone. In the ninth, to cause infirmities, they made a seal of lead, being the image of a man wanting his privy parts, covering his eyes with his hands, and they perfumed it with rose iron of the pine. In the tenth, to facilitate childbearing, and to cure the sick, they made a seal of gold, being the head of a lion, and perfumed it with amber. In the eleventh, for fear reverence, and worship, they made a seal of a plate of gold, being the image of a man riding on a lion, holding the ear thereof in his left hand, and in his right holding forth a bracelet of gold, and they perfumed it with good odors and saffron. In the twelfth, for the separation of lovers, they made a seal of black lead, being the image of a dragon fighting with a man, and they perfumed it with the hairs of a lion, and a saffaratida. In the thirteenth, for the agreement of married people, and for dissolving of all the charms against copulation, they made a seal of the images of both, of the man in red wax, and the woman in white, and caused them to embrace one another, perfuming it with lignum mallows and amber. In the fourteenth, for divorce and separation of the man from the woman, they made a seal of red copper, being the image of a dog, biting his tail, and they perfumed it with the hair of a black dog and a black cat. In the fifteenth, to obtain friendship and goodwill, they made the image of a man sitting, and inditing letters, and perfumed it with frankincense and nutmegs. In the sixteenth, for gaining much merchandising, they made a seal of silver, being the image of a man, sitting on a chair, holding a balance in his hand, and they perfumed it with well-smelling spices. In the seventeenth, against thieves and robbers, they sealed with an iron seal the image of an ape and perfumed it with the air of an ape. In the eighteenth, against fevers and pains of the belly, they made a seal of copper, being the image of a snake with his tail above his head, and they perfumed it with hartshorn, and said this same seal put to flight serpents, and all venomous creatures, from the place where it is buried. In the nineteenth, for facilitating birth, and provoking the menstrues, they made a seal of copper, being the image of a woman holding her hands upon her face, and they perfumed it with liquid storax. In the twentieth, for hunting, they made a seal of tin, being the image of Sagittary, half a man and half a horse, and they perfumed it with the head of a wolf. In the twenty-first, for the destruction of somebody, they made the image of a man, with a double countenance before and behind, and they perfumed it with brimstone and jet, and put it in a box of brass and with it brimstone and jet, and the hair of him whom they would hurt. In the twenty-second, 
for the security of runaways, they made a seal of iron, being the image of a man, with wings on his feet, bearing a helmet on his head, and they perfumed it with argent vive. In the twenty-third, for destruction and wasting, they made a seal of iron, being the image of a cat, having a dog's head, and they perfumed it with dog's hair taken from the head, and buried it in the place where they intended the hurt. In the twenty-fourth, for multiplying herds of cattle, they took the horn of a ram, bull, or goat, or of that sort of cattle they would increase, and sealed in it, burning, with an iron seal, the image of a woman giving suck to her son, and they hanged it on the neck of that cattle who was the leader of the flock, or they sealed it in his horn. In the twenty-fifth, for the preservation of trees and harvest, they sealed, in the wood of a fig tree, the image of a man planting and they perfumed it with the flowers of the fig tree, and hung it on the tree. In the twenty-sixth, for love and favor, they sealed, in white wax and mastich, the figure of a woman washing and combing her hair, and they perfumed it with good odors. In the twenty-seventh, to destroy fountains, pits, medicinal waters, and baths, they made, of red earth, the image of a man winged, holding in his hand an empty vessel, and perforated, and the image being burned, they put in the vessel a sarfoetida and liquid storax, and they buried it in the pond or fountain which they would destroy. In the twenty-eighth, for getting fish together, they made a seal of copper, being the image of a fish, and they perfumed it with the skin of a sea fish, and cast it into the water where they would have the fish gathered. Moreover, together with the aforesaid images, they wrote down also the names of the spirits, and their characters, and invoked and prayed for those things which they pretended to obtain.